Hello everybody and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video in which we will talk about two brand new types that have been introduced in .NET 6 and I would say they are or they were long awaited types like developer were asking for them and I talk about date only and time only which are two new value types directly in the system core library of .NET 6. The idea behind the concept of date only and time only is very simple because we a lot of times in our code we just need to represent only a date portion of a date time that we have right now or only a time portion of it for instance when you store something like date of birth so in 90 percent of the applications you might working on and in which you would have to store such type of dates you don't actually care about the time you don't care about the exact time when somebody uh, was actually born when you calculate for instance uh, how many years that person has or, or things similar to that so this is why uh, and of course on the other hand there might be some uh, well scenarios where you just want to represent a time without also the date portion of it for instance if you want to calculate some uh, uh, some differences between times of the day and things similar to that. So this was not possible prior because in the previous versions of .NET, whenever we wanted to use a date time, we could use only just a date time, which included the date portion and also included the time portion of it. So this was a little bit cumbersome when it came to really which were our needs in order to represent the application. And that's why we had, or there were some other libraries, uh, third part libraries that that were used uh, very very often to solve actually this type of problems that we might have uh, representing only the date portion of a certain date or only the time portion of it so let's take a look into how exactly is this supposed to work in dotnet 6 let's start for instance and as i was talking about birthday let's have a variable which is called my uh, birthday and uh, this one so previous to .NET 6, I would have to create here a new date time. In fact, you can also see that Visual Studio already suggests me that I want here a new date time. But what I actually want here is a new date only. I don't want actually a date time, but the date only, which once again is a value type, is very similar to the date time struct that we had previously. But the main difference is that we only have here the date portion of the usual date time object so let's specify here usually here when we create a new instance of that we would have to specify an integer for a year we would have to specify an integer for a month and we would have to specify an integer for a day of course and then what we could do is we could use the console and uh, yeah write this date to the console so let's have here my birth date which should be right now displayed in the console. So if we run the application, everything should be fine. And we should see my date of birth, which is exactly this one, of course, in this very specific format with day, month, and year. And of course, everything that you were accustomed to it on a regular date time, like how to format this when you want to represent that as a string is still possible here. So without any other problems, you could say here, for instance, I would like to have, I don't know, a day day. Uh, I would like to have maybe a month and I would like to have a year like that. Uh, sorry, of course, we need to, to specify this. Just one second and this will be sorted. So if we run this application right now, you should see we should we see exactly the format that we have specified here but if we want to do it also more fancy than that we could simply do for instance we want to display the full day then we want to display the day number then we would like to display uh, the month as a three letter and then we would like to display of course the entire year and we run the application and it's exactly how it would expect so sunday 1st of January 1984. So once again, this works exactly like it was working also on the regular date time. Actually, this date time only is very, very similar in all its functionalities to a regular date time. Once again, the only difference is that it is used to only represent the date portion of something. 
Now, for instance, if you would like to maybe in your new applications, if you migrate them, uh, or if you have older applications that you want to migrate to .NET 6, you might then start to use daytime only, but your application is probably full of daytimes. So no problem here, because what we can do here is let's have a new variable. Let's call it from date time. And we can say that it is date uh, time or date only, sorry. And then we have this from date time. And for instance, we can say here from date time, let's take date time now, for instance. We might even add some days to that, like minus 10 in this case. And that would be it, of course, add days. That should be like that. And we could also write this in the console. So console write line. And that should be it. I don't want to format it right now. I just want to actually showcase that it is working. So if I run it again, we see that we have only the date portion of it. And we started actually from a regular date time but we just take the date portion of it. Now, another scenario that you might want to use, and that is very, very similar to what we had on the date time actually, is to actually use the try parse method. And of course, it's working also on this date only object. So we could have here something very, very similar to like uh, date only, if date only dot try parse, which would actually give me a, a boolean back so a true or a false if the parsing can be done and for instance here i want a year uh, 20, uh 21 then month 10 and day 27 and uh yeah that that uh, would actually be so of course we can then provide also an out var result to it like it usually happens with uh, those and then we can just console write line the result so try parse works exactly like it worked before and it's actually here everything works fine now here we can go one step further for instance of course you could also use try parse exact and that, that would try to parse exact you can also specify here a culture info if you want to to try to parse uh, to a certain culture info or from a certain culture info and so on. Once again, it's exactly like we had it on a regular date time, but it is also possible to do that in the date only struct that we have right now. Now, the last thing that I want to show you regarding this date is var, for instance, uh, new date. And here we can say that it's uh, my uh, birthday and we have all the regular uh, methods, for instance, like for instance, uh, we could add a day let's add days one we could add a month let's add also month one to what we had and also add year and also have it one and of course i can say console write line and uh, that should practically do it this two string is not even necessary but visual studio 2022 already added it for me so that's basically it. So this is how the date only works. As you can see, it's very, very similar to what we had in date time in regular .NET or in all the .NET versions uh, till now, but it is used only to represent the date portion of it. Let's look now at the other part of the story, which is the time only, because this is another, or I would say the correspondence struct, which is used to represent only the time portion uh, if we actually need that and the scenarios in which we might actually want to do uh, things like that is when we want for instance to calculate differences between different times of a day and let's have this following example let's have here a start time and that would be equal to new uh, time only and when i create a new time only it would take actually an int for hour and let's make it 10 and it would take an int uh, for minutes, and it could also take an int for seconds and an int for milliseconds. But for now, that should be okay for me. Let's also have a new variable end time. And in this case, it would be all time only, but let's make it in this case 17. And uh, let's make it here right now, uh, I don't know, 47 and 30 seconds. 
that should be the end time what we can do here is we can have var diff on that and this would be a end time minus start time so that's okay and of course what we could write here in the console dot right line and here we could have an string interpolation to display a certain message like for instance hours and that would be diff dot uh, total hours and if we want to know exactly how many uh, there were elapsed between those two intervals we can also access that minute and here we can have diff dot total minutes and that should totally work of course now the result of such a mathematical operation on time only structs is actually a time span which once again is nothing very it, it, it is nothing new it's the same for instance if we do some mathematical operations uh, on the time parts of a regular day time the diff would also usually be in a time span and then we could use this information from the time span to, to know exactly okay uh, how many uh, hours elapsed between those two uh, time points how many minutes seconds and we could also do some other and further calculations so if we run the application right now we should see exactly that we have this amount of hours that would have elapsed and minutes totally oh, is 40 uh, 437.5 minutes that have elapsed uh, during those specified time uh, intervals now, of course one other very common task that you might want to accomplish using this um, time only struct which is once again new in dotnet sticks to accommodate or to represent time only without the date portion of it now you could use for instance uh, to check if, if a certain time is is between an interval so we could for instance have here var uh, current time and that would be equals uh, time only and in time only we have something similar uh, like we have on the date only of course we could use from date time and we could for instance have here date time dot now and we want to check if this uh, date time right now or if this time only that that represent that represents the time that is exactly right now we could uh, for instance have here var is uh, between and here we could use for instance the current time which once again is a time only struct and we have this in between method and here we can specify the start time and for that we already have a variable and we can specify an end time for which we also have a variable and then we could do some uh, fancy stuff here so console write line but we don't write the is in between we want to write something a little bit more advanced than that so let's have a string interpolation here and let's say current time and uh, we can specify here for instance the current time and say um let's i guess we will also need uh, those parentheses and is bit in between uh if yes so if this is true then i want to display is uh, if not i want to display is not and then of course between start and end that's between start and end so that would be it so let's run the application once again and check if everything works and we say current time is not between start and 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 end which is totally true because the start is i guess uh, 10 30 in the morning the end time is at 17 47 in the afternoon and my current time of recording is well very early in the day i would say right now so yeah that's pretty much it so once again this date only and time only structs are new types that were introduced in dotnet 6 to help accommodate scenarios in which we want to only represent the date portion of a date time or only the time portion of of a date time and this actually gives us a lot of more flexibility when it comes to do different calculations and when it comes actually with representing what we actually want to represent or want to model in our application and i am really happy about the fact that this uh 
that, that these two new structs were introduced right now in .NET 6. So that's pretty much it for this uh, topic of, about uh, an introduction actually in what is a date only and a time only in .NET 6. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to hit the thumbs up and also the subscribe. Very important to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the new content that we try to generate really on a very, very fast pace. And if you think that there might be other colleagues or friends of you that might benefit from it, don't be shy and spread the word, share this content, let people know that you found something that might interest them. And uh, maybe they will be thankful to you uh, altogether. And once again, if you want to say something, if you want to add something, or if you have questions, also once again, don't be shy and uh, hit the comment section, write a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you to get a discussion going because this is actually what keeps me uh, on. This is actually what keeps me doing these videos, the, the entire sense of community that we can actually build. Once again, you uh, thank you very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.